Hey, let's look at how to make some games in Scratch. So first up on the Scratch page, which is scratch.mit.edu. If you don't have an account already, I would make one because it will automatically save your stuff. Here on the front page, you can explore other people's games and animations, and that's all down here. And you can also view the source code for each of these, so that's nice. But for now, if you click Create, it'll go to a window like this. So in Scratch, we have sprites. So the cat, <clears throat> excuse me, the cat right here is a sprite. And we have backdrops. So that will be our background images. We can move the cat around the game screen. So this window right here is the game screen. And then over here is the code screen. This is where we actually put our code blocks. So we have different categories of code blocks here. We can use those to you know, program the game. Um, we also have costumes up here, so we could modify it if we wanted. We can, uh, let's not, let's not behead the, ca the cat, but if you wanted to move different things, you could. Maybe you didn't want it to look like it's walking, and you can kind of like readjust it so it looks like, well, oh, oh, that's all one spot. Oh, oh that's not going to work. Well, anyway, we're probably not going to use this version of the cat, but you can move things around if you want. There's also sounds. And so this one has a sound already with it, but you can also record sounds. You could also uh, upload images from your own computer, or you could just draw with this tool. So I could try to draw a picture here, but I am not going to. We're going to delete the cat. So first off, before I actually start working on a game, I like to choose a backdrop. And there's an XY coordinate backdrop I like to use, the XY grid. This is handy because it will tell me where the different positions on the game screen are. So let me add a, a sprite as well. You can uh, paint a sprite, you can, I guess, use a random sprite or upload a picture from your computer. I'm just gonna use a existing one. And I'm not really sure what I'm gonna make yet, but um, let's maybe do something maybe like a whack-a-mole game. I don't know if they have a mole, but Maybe it could be jellyfish or pufferfish. So this pufferfish can be in different coordinate um, positions on the grid. So let's look at this. Here are the pufferfish um, properties. So XY is going to be your left and right position. If I set this to negative 100, it will be there. If I set it to positive 100, it will be there, and if I set it to zero, it'll be right in the center. So here it says the you know the minimum is negative 240, the maximum is positive 240. The Y is the up and down, so if I do negative 100, it'll be down there. If I do positive 100, it'll do, be there and there. We can also adjust the size, so 100 is 100% the, the standard size. We could half it by making it 50 or we can make it three-fourths size by making it 75%. We could blow it up to double to make it 200%. But for now, maybe we'll keep it at 100. There's also rotation, so it has different angles, but the default is at 90 degrees. And so that's just a little bit of the basics there. If I wanted to change the puffer fish again, I could go in here. Oops, I actually gave it a dot. I thought I was on this one. So it looks like the, the fins are on a different layer and you could move that around. We could get rid of the face, oops, <laughs> and then change the face if we wanted to. It also comes with several frames of animation, so you can change this in the code as well. So maybe this is the puffer fish by itself and then if you click it, maybe it gets angry or something like that. Oops, so I'm gonna keep it at puffer fish A for now. All right, so in events, I want to just set up how the game is at the beginning. There's a when the green flag is clicked button. So that is here. Usually before you start the game, you'll have it like this and you have to hit play to start. So when we want it to start at some position, kind of like a random position to start with, we will want to do that whenever the game loads. So when the flag is clicked, when the game is started, Let's go into the motion and choose go to X position, 
or sorry, go to X and Y position so you can set something random. Um, so right now, if I move it here, it'll be reset back there. I could also type in zero and zero here, and that will reset it back to the middle. Or I can go into operators and choose pick random from one to 10. I can adjust that. One to 10 is not very much. That's only that much amount of space. But again, we have negative 240 for the X as the minimum and positive 240 as the maximum. And so I could have it appear at a random X coordinate and it will take care of like figuring out what's random and then setting it that X and Y coordinate. Uh, right now the Y is just set to zero. So I'm also going to do a random Y. It has maximum 180, minimum negative 180. So we'll do that. So now when the game starts, it will be placed somewhere random on the screen. Okay, so if this is more of a whack-a-mole game, we'll just have it where um, when you click on the, the puffer fish, you'll get a point or something like that. So back in events, this is where we can detect keyboard input, we can detect mouse input. If you wanted to have your microphone plugged in, you could detect loudness. Um, I'm not going to do that. There's also broadcasting messages, which is a little bit more advanced for doing more sophisticated programming in here. Um, but for now, let's just do when the sprite is clicked. So right now, it does nothing when I click on the sprite. But there are different things we could do. We could have it move around. Oh, there's also go to random position. I could have just done that. That would have been easier. <laughs> um, and there's looks. This will let you do like word balloons and stuff. So I could do that. When I click it, it'll say hello. And you can see it highlight over here when it's being executed. Or if we click on the puffer fish, maybe it'll turn into a different sp sprite. So did you see that? It changed to a winky face. Or next costume. So again, the puffer fish has multiple costumes. One, two, three, four. So every time I click it, it will change what it's doing. We could also change the backdrops. We haven't really done anything here. Oh, it didn't. What happened to my backdrop? <laughs> So we have backdrop one, but we could have multiple ones in here as well. So back to the pufferfish code, we can move it around, we can make it go to the mouse uh, cursor. You could rotate it, you could bounce it if it's on the edge. Um, and you can also get its X and Y position if you wanted to. For now, we're gonna do something where uh, we are going to add to a score. So to keep track of numbers, like, you know, a score of zero or one or two or three, we'll need a variable. It comes with this default my variable, but I'm gonna rename it, or you could just make a new variable. So here, you could say uh, score. So for this sprite only would be just some information or data you're storing just for this puffer fish but my score applies to the entire game. So now we can see the score on the screen. We could also um, hide it from the screen, but it will still exist. And so when the flag is clicked, let's make sure that we set the score to zero. So you're starting the game over. When the sprite is clicked, we're going to change the score by one. So that's going to add one to the variable. So every time I click it, it will go up by one. Now this is not a very challenging game. <laughs> It's uh, just sitting there and clicking in the same guy over and over. So let's make some changes. Um, first off, I want this guy to look happy again. So let's look at setting its costume to Pufferfish A. So when we start the game, it's gonna be somewhere random. And then once I click it, let's change its costume to Pufferfish D. No, let's change it to Pufferfish C to the angry one. And we add one to the score. And maybe after that, it'll move somewhere new. So there are different ways we can do this. We could have it like immediately warp to a new position. There's go to random position. We'll use that this time. So if I click it, it'll go somewhere random. Or there's also glide. So it will take one second, or we can make that more to go to a random position. So click, and then it goes somewhere new. Click, and it goes somewhere new. So then that way you kind of have to keep track of it. So finally, 
I want it to look back happy again when it um, gets to where it's going. So we're going to switch the costume to Pufferfish A. This won't execute until this one is done. So we'll start over. It's angry, now it's happy. It's angry, now it's happy. And so that's kind of setting that up. So now let's change the backdrop since we've already talked about the uh, coordinate plane. You could also upload your own backdrop if you want, but there's also a bunch of pre-made ones. So this one goes with that. We could add some extra different types of enemies, like maybe pufferfish is easy to click. Maybe there's something else that's harder to click, but this is an easy, basic uh, game at first. I'm going to add maybe a really fast enemy. Uh, let's see, what's another underwater? We got this weird starfish. We got this wizard toad. Let's do maybe this jellyfish? Or maybe you shouldn't touch the jellyfish. Actually, technically, maybe you shouldn't touch the pufferfish either, but uh, whichever. This fish has different ones, this frog, so many different options. Maybe I'll just do a simple fish. And I'll make this fish small. So we're going to copy some of the same code. We want it to be somewhere random every time we start the game. So over in Pufferfish, I am going to right click on here and say duplicate. Oops, oops, I just messed that up. Okay, so now I have this duplicate set of code, but I can move it into the fish. Oh, I guess it duplicated on its own. So technically, I don't need to say duplicate. I can delete these. <laughs> So I could have just clicked and dragged this here, and it would have stayed in the puffer fish, and then also copied over to this fish. Now fishy, we have four different types of fish. We don't have puffer fish A, so we're going to get rid of that. Let's just say, hmm, switch to next costume. So every time it starts, it'll be some different type of fish. Okay. Now we also want something to happen when we click on the sprite, so I'm just going to copy this over here. And we have when sprite is clicked. Um, so we'll not switch the costume, because it doesn't have that pufferfish stuff. But maybe this fish will move a lot faster. Maybe half of a second. So this one moves slower, this one moves faster. And maybe we'll have it so this one is always moving, so it's a lot harder to catch. So, let's see. We have events, and when the flag is clicked, and we have when the sprite is clicked, but now we want it to continually move while the game is running. So, we have flag is clicked. We can add another one, just to kind of keep these pieces of code separate. And under control, there's an option to repeat. We can do something 10 times, we can do something forever. So while the game is running, we're going to continually move the fish around. And we will glide it to some random position in maybe half a second. And now it's going to keep moving and you have to try to click it and it's going to be a lot harder. Ah, so. Um, and then here, actually, we technically don't need this because it's going to move all of the time. But if you do happen to catch the small fish, let's say you get five points instead. So, okay, maybe I might, I might have to make it go slower. Okay, <laughs> there, I got some points. Now, it is a little bit hard to tell when I'm clicking on the fish because it's not really giving me any input. The fish just kind of keeps moving. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to make a sound effect whenever we click on one of them. So... We have different sounds we can play. When we are when we click the fish, we got ocean wave or bubbles. I don't know what these sound like, so let's click on sounds. Okay, that's kind of long though. Okay, well maybe I'll try to record a new sound. Oh, or they also have a lot of pre-made sounds. But let's just record. Oh, nope, my microphone's being used by my recording software. So we're gonna look for an existing sound, maybe something, um, hmm. I want something like, yay, you got, you, you collected it. Hmm. 
collect, so maybe that. That sounds like, yay, you got it. And then for Pufferfish, we'll do the same. We'll play a sound when you click on it, but we're going to use a different one. Let me look. Effects. Maybe this one, so you know when you click on the big fish versus the small fish. So this one is Glug. I think I didn't set this one. This one will be Collect. So when we start the game over, so now that changes every time, and then I need to try to catch the small fish. So there, I can see when, when that happens. Though it is quite hard to click the, to catch this fish. There we go. <laughs> So, yeah, there's there's kind of a basic, it's kind of whack-a-mole style, but a little bit different. You're just clicking on the fish and then they move around. And if you wanted to, you could draw your own fish art and then add that in the game. But yeah, let's just call this Catching Fish. And if you wanted to share your creation, you can click on Share. Um, it'll ask for instructions like to play the game. Uh, press the green flag to start. Click on the puffer fish to get one point. Click on the fast fish to get five points. And then how did I make this? I don't know. By me. Or uh, if you had art from your friend or something like that, you can say, you know, art by my friend. So that's good. I think that I can add it to my studio. I just have that in there. And then we can copy the link and send it to friends, or we could embed it into a web page if we were going to make a web page for ourselves. And then to actually play it, click play, and you can test it out here. Still hard to catch the, the fast fish. We'll unfull screen it. And then I'm trying to see, it says unshared. I'm wondering, it should be public now, so. If I go to my stuff, I see it here, it says unshare. Okay, so yeah, it's public now. And I can add it to different folders. I've made several folders. Um, if you happen to go to my profile, you can see the featured project. You can see shared project. So everything I've made shared shows up in here. So you could basically just take this URL and give send your friend a um, link to your profile, and then they can play all of the games you've made. Okay, so that's the first little game. If you want, I will put this in the description of this video, and you can play it yourself. You can also look at the code by clicking see inside, and poof, there's the code. You can also do that for the other games as well. So for example, um, I've made like a Space Invaders type of game here. loud. Uh, and you can see inside this as well. This one is more complicated, but maybe we'll get there at some point. <laughs> okay, hope that, uh, hope that you enjoyed this, and if you make a game as well, feel free to send me a link to it. Okay, bye!